Hey friends, and welcome back. Uh, so today we are working on getting some landscape lighting, lighting around my patio. So this is a non-audio music power project, but uh, again, I try to be as diverse as I can with the electrical projects here. So uh, if you remember from any of the patio videos that I posted, um, we poured this patio at the end of last year. So we're finally getting around to using it. We're now in June. Um, so I'm going to do Philips Hue lights out here because why do something cheap when you can do something expensive? So, um, and because I am just a bit OCD with such things, um, I have our commercial electrician uh, that we use at LM out here doing this conduit run for me. Um, so I had uh, the landscape company come in and drop some sand on either side of the walkway here, and then we're going to enclose all of the lights in some conduit. Um, so I'm using uh, Philips Hue Cala Bollard lights um, that are going to be pretty cool. And basically there's going to be a little junction box with a little tail coming out of it. Um, to uh, make sure that the lights are secure uh, during uh, during their install, and then we're gonna have a landscaping come back in. But you know, I've I've uh, always seen landscaping lights, and I've certainly troubleshot the landscaping lights at my parents' house enough times uh, to understand that uh, you got to enclose that stuff in conduit. So um, that's uh, that's what they're up to now. So this is uh, just we're using three quarter inch PVC conduit. We're gonna run lights on on either side of the patio here. Um, and uh, our fine, fine friends at Liberty Electric are, uh, are running some uh, running some power. So um, we'll uh, we'll check in with Nico here at Liberty Electric, and he can uh, sort of explain what we're doing. Nico, will you narrate what you're doing? Currently running underground so we can mount some lights, getting the connectors in for the boxes to whip out, and then we can start wiring. What's up, everybody? So, we've got uh, all the conduit run here. And uh, what we're basically gonna do, uh, before we start pulling wires, I just wanted to show you what's done. So, on the side here, we've got this cable gland that uh, is actually gonna be the exit for the light. So each one of the lights comes with a little extension um, that uh, in a normal application, there's a T and uh, just the, um, the, the tail that comes out. So what we're gonna do is they're gonna run uh, two circuits in here. So two neutrals and two hots because we have 22 lights and uh, each transformer can, can basically handle 10 or 11 lights. So um, we're gonna split that up so that uh, depending on how we wire it in the future, uh, there'll be uh, four wires pulled. So again, two hots and two neutrals. And then um, what the electricians are gonna do uh, for me but on this, this is the cable gland that's going to come up so that um, when I wire the lights in, that's, uh, that's what it's going to go to. So here's our very nice conduit run. All right. Catch you on the next step. See you when wire's pulled. All right. So the electricians have finished up the, uh, the PVC here. And here's what we've got going on. Um, so they ran me two separate lines. Um, this pastel yellow color is one hot, and the purple is another hot. So I have two hots and two neutrals. Um, so they've got my cable gland here on the side. This is off, by the way. Um, so what I'm going to do now is um, I'm going to run this to my shop and uh, make a little hat box jig for the top of this. Because basically what we need to do is drill a hole centered in this, um, and there will be a, a quarter 20 
uh, bolt that sticks through here. Um, and that's gonna be how we mount the light. So the, uh, the tail is just gonna go through this cable gland here. Um, so, uh, actually, before we do this, I'm gonna show you where the, uh, the electrical is in the shed at, at the moment. Okay, so looking at the electrical at the moment, here's what they're up to. Um, so, in a previous video, maybe I showed you this, maybe I didn't, um, they ran the electrical through the bottom of the shed. So they needed to go through the, um, they needed to get from one side of the house to the other, um, and they needed to basically run just electrical through the shed, which is a nice, a nice bonus for me, um, because now I have two 20 amp outlets in the shed. But um, here are the ends of this, of this Romax that they've got here. Um, basically, this is our power lines. Um, so if you look at the black and the white, uh, these are our two separate hots coming from the basement. Um, and then here's our uh, pastel uh, yellow and purple. Um, so this wire, actually, this is, this is flexible wire. Um, this is, let me see. I think this is, oh, this is 14 gauge wire that's coming up. Um, and then they've got this wired up into a switch. So... I didn't really ask for this outlet, but hey, that's okay. They put it in. Um, this is coming up to a switch, and the reason why we did that is basically, um, you know, uh, if you want to, if you're outside and you want to turn the lights on really quick, you can just hit the switch. So in theory, the switch will be always on, um, and that's that's how, and we'll just control the lights with the app. So anyway, here's the electrical so far. Uh, I'm gonna make that jig. All right, so I'm at my shop right now. Um, I made myself a little bracket here so I can start drilling the junction boxes out. Uh, basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slide my top plate of my junction box on here and this hole will find me center. So um, the other thing that I want to do while I'm here is I want to take this light apart and figure out basically uh, how long of a bolt that I need. So I've gone through a couple of iterations as to how I want to mount these. That's been the biggest problem uh, with this project. I went down this uh, serious rabbit hole of trying to figure out what this connector was, the ExceedCon connector, and uh, they are made in China and not available. So basically, here's how these bollard lights come apart. Um, so it has this bottom portion um, and then there's just a simple quarter 20 uh, bolt that goes through here. So I'm just going to pop this off real quick. So I just grabbed a 916 deep well socket. I'm just going to pull this off. So basically, this bolt. Oh, cool. This is a, actually, this is a stainless bolt. That's cool. Um, this, this is a three quarter inch bolt. So I think if I use maybe an inch and a quarter, inch and a half, uh, that should stick out the bottom of this without a problem. So I'm going to, I'm going to grab an inch and a quarter and an inch and a half. Actually, I'm going to do an inch and a half because by the time we get a nut on this thing, this, the depth of this, um, the depth of this piece actually is an inch and a half, inch and five eighths, really. With uh, about a half inch, three quarters of an inch recess in here, so um, I think an inch and a half would be would be good. Nope, inch and a quarter will be good. <laughs> Sorry for the deliberation. Inch and a quarter it is. I'm gonna grab that and we'll take this home and try it out. Well, I should have known that this was going to be too easy. So, you know, at the uh, the shop that I work at, we keep a lot of hardware in stock, but mostly just in two flavors, in the three-eighths and quarter-twenty flavor. And here I was thinking that this was a quarter-twenty, went and grabbed one, grabbed a three-eighths. It is, of course, an M8 metric screw, so, or a metric bolt. So, of course, I uh, <laughs> don't have these, especially in stainless, so... I will order these and uh, at some point check back in. Hey friends, so 
I've gotten four of these lights installed so far. Um, just wanted to get my build procedure pretty much done before I uh, brought you guys along. But uh, before we get started, man, just check out this gnarly sky. Uh, it's about 7.30 at night. It's uh, the end of June. I don't even remember what the date is, but uh, these are the wildfires up in Canada. So we're in northeastern Ohio, and uh, that is not fog. That is not haze. That is smoke. It's been happening all day, but the sun just being red and angry up there has been pretty cool to watch. Um, so I've got a, a temporary wiring solution done. Pardon the uh, mess. So basically what the electricians have done for me so far um, is they've given me this switched outlet. So it's this duplex on a switch. I've got one of the 95 watt transformers plugged in and uh, I've just got a temporary splice there with some Wagos that are powering everything. So I've got this in pretty much a development mode here. Um, so I figured I'd get all the lights in and working. And then once that's done, um, I can get the, uh, get the, the wiring nice and neat in the barn. Um, and things have been going uh, a little rocky with this process, I'm not gonna lie. Um, so, you know, basically what the electricians have done for me is run this conduit um, and uh, you know, we've just been basically splicing things in, which I'll show you here in a second. But um, there's been some interesting processes with these lights. Uh, some of them have been uh, arriving uh, from Amazon broken. Um, I bought factory refurb lights for, for everything. So I've uh, basically come up with a little test rig over here that uh, allows me to just turn everything on and associate it with the system. Um, so what I did is I have my secondary transformer right here. So I'm using one of the ExceedCon connectors just to plug it in. And then the other one I have uh, just Wagos on the end of a cutoff tail. Um, and that just lets me do some QC stuff. But as far as uh, the install goes, it's, it's working out pretty much exactly like I thought, other than just some technical difficulties with the lights. Uh, so here's what they look like when they're installed. So they're just sitting on that junction box. And then we've got... Uh, We've got our little uh, cable gland on the back, and it's, it's, it's pretty nice. Um, so some of the problems that I've been having is I'm definitely dealing with different revisions of, uh, of the lights. So some of them have a brown and a blue European uh, wire, uh, uh, two wire on the inside of the exterior jacket. Um, so that gives me my hot and my neutral, but two of them, or some of them are black and red instead of black and white. So I learned the hard way that black is neutral and red is hot. I think I fried two lights. So if you're watching this, just know that if you have your different colors, your red is your hot and not your black. So anyway, I'll, uh, I'll show you how I get these wired into the conduit. Okay, so I made myself this little jig um, to, uh, to basically, we're just cheating center a little bit offset on, these, on each one of these J boxes. Uh, so basically, this just gives me about a quarter of an inch gap on here so that uh, I can just slide this on the top like this. It doesn't go uh, left or right and allows me to just go a little bit off center. So I'm using a drill bit just to get my hole started. And these uh, PVC boxes are actually a bit of a challenge to drill. They, uh, they just don't want to seem to grip. So I have to basically take this off. And then once this is off, I can finish the hole. So you can see that this is just slightly off center, but that's uh, actually intentional. So in each of our boxes here, we've got four wires. Um, there's a purple and a, uh, a pastel yellow. This signifies both of my hotlines, and then there's two separate whites. So each one of the whites is a neutral, um, and each of the colors are a what dictates basically what transformer uh, these are on. So these are 14 gauge wires. So all I'm going to do here is strip this like this, and I'm going to use a, uh, a three position Wago to uh, to splice the light in. Um, so we're just going to match our colors here. So these are my hot lines. So my next step here is um, I'm just 
cutting this exceed con connector off. And then we'll take a knife and strip this back. So uh, after the wire's stripped here, basically what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take this base off. And there's just three of these little screws and then these little plastic washers. Obviously you wanna be careful during this step so that you don't scratch up your lights. So once this is off, I've just been pulling this and there's just our little M8 bolt in there. So I was able to grab a 40 millimeter um, M8 bolt that in the stainless steel flavor. Um, this basically equates to an inch and a quarter in uh, Imperial. Uh, so once that's on, we're going to put that on, or our, our J-Box cover, put our nut back on. And really, you probably want to use a washer here, but I'm being lazy. And then we'll pull our cable out, and we'll just screw this portion back in. Okay, so once we've got our base attached, we can take our cable gland nut and just insert this guy on here like this. Feed our wires through. And then make our connection. So uh, this one is blue and brown. This is the European color code. Um, so brown is our hot. And blue is our neutral. So once that's on, we'll twist this back in, get our nut started. And I'm using a PG 13 and a half cable gland on this. And once that's done, we're just going to put our screws back on. And I've been putting these in in uh, opposing sides. And don't tighten them all the way down until you get all of them in. Okay, and once our screws are in, we're just going to tighten our cable gland down. And there we go. We just need to rinse and repeat this about 20 more times. All right, and there we go. Moment of truth, the light comes on. So here's what this looks like from the back with the cable gland. Uh, so it does, uh, I think, look very neat. So uh, now we just need to run this down the row and keep going. All right, well, we're finally finished with the patio lighting project. And what a lovely day on August 31st, a few months later. So here's what all of our lights look like. So we've got a lot of these rocks in and here's the pathway lighting. So this portion here, um, we're just waiting. Um, Landscaper was just waiting on me to finish getting the lights in. So they're all finally in and uh, we just need to wire them up now. So the next project is getting our box wired in the shed. So stay tuned for part two of the video and uh, we'll catch you on the next part when we get the box installed. Thanks for stopping by.